This is an experiment to look at the reduction of copper oxide using hydrogen gas. We will also look at the quantities of copper and copper oxide uh, that were present in the experiment. The gas that we're going to pass over hydrogen comes from a cylinder. We will pass the hydrogen across the copper oxide which will be in this combustion tube. The combustion tube will um, be heated and the copper oxide reacts only with the hydrogen when it is hot. We will light the hydrogen at the end. Um, hydrogen burns, but obviously hydrogen oxygen mixtures are explosive, so we need to be a little bit careful. I just set up the hydrogen cylinder so that we are able to proceed with the experiment. Okay, the copper oxide is to be placed in this combustion tube. We will weigh the combustion tube first. So if you'd like to take a note of the mass of the combustion tube prior to the experiment. I will then place some copper oxide into the combustion tube. The copper oxide here it's just been poured into the lid to make it easier to transfer the copper oxide. I will try to put as much of the copper oxide into the middle of the tube so that we are able to heat it effectively. Also making sure that not too much of the copper oxide is near the bung. But still trying to spread it out as much as possible. So take a note of the new mass of the copper oxide and the combustion tube. We replace the combustion tube and I will now start the flow of hydrogen gas. I allow the hydrogen gas to flow for a short while so that we do not have a mixture of air and hydrogen so that I can safely ignite. The hydrogen gas is being turned on. I need it for a few seconds. Carefully reignite. The reaction doesn't occur in the cold, and so we need to heat the copper oxide. So we will light a Bunsen. Initially, we will um, heat with a small flame, but we will build up the heating throughout. So initially, fairly small flame and we'll start to heat the copper oxide. As I heat I need to make sure that I capture all of the copper oxide and try to make sure that I convert all of it into so what's happening at the moment is the hydrogen gas is passing over the copper oxide. The reaction doesn't occur in the cold, but if I warm this, you may be able to just see that the copper oxide is changing from black to a pinky brown colour, which is the formation of the, of the copper. So we get all of the copper in that area formed and then I'll move further down the tube 
using that a little bit harder. So that the black copper oxide everywhere is converted into copper. So at this point I will just increase the Bunsen flame to try and help ensure that all of the copper oxide is converted into copper. You see that there's a little bit of black copper oxide at this end of the tube and you may see the flame go slightly green as there's an inevitable loss there as a result of the copper atoms being picked up by the gas and you get the typical flame colour of copper of being that blue-green colour. Okay, so plenty of the copper oxide has now converted into copper. So we will just raise the heating level still further to see if we can get more and more of the copper oxide converted. Finally, absolutely at full, full pace on the Bunsen. Now, when we finish this experiment, the chances are not all of the oxygen will have been picked up by the hydrogen. So not all of the copper oxide will have been converted to copper. To ensure that we have done this, we would, after the first weighing, which we will do in a second, of the copper and the combustion tube, we would put it back onto this equipment and we would heat again. If, after further heating, it has the same mass, we can be fairly certain that we have driven off all of the um, oxygen, all of the oxygen has been removed. This is called heating to constant mass. However, if we didn't get the same mass, and it had gone down further, we would need to put the combustion tube back on again and again until eventually you reached constant mass. In this video, we will just heat it once and use the results from one heating, which will clearly be a little inaccurate. When we come to the end of the experiment, it is um, essential that we do not turn out the hydrogen gas while the copper is still hot. Copper plus air or oxygen, the 20% of the air which is oxygen, would react together to reform the copper oxide which we have just converted into copper, which would obviously uh, alter the result considerably and we would see some black copper oxide. So as we finish the experiment and we prepare for our first, uh, our, on this occasion our only weighing, we will turn the Bunsen out but we will leave the hydrogen gas still flowing. And as you can see, there is plenty of copper having been formed, but maybe also some signs that there may be a little bit of black copper oxide left. So we need to leave this until it has cooled sufficiently that the copper will no longer react with the oxygen in the air. And this is difficult to judge, but we will leave it for a short while.
we will try after that relatively short period of cooling. So we will turn the hydrogen gas out and I will weigh the combustion tube with the copper in. As you can see, plenty of copper has been formed. So it is certainly true, copper oxide plus hydrogen produces copper and the other product is of course H2O, but in the gaseous state. And so if you'd like to take that final reading, that is the mass of the combustion tube and the copper that we have produced.